This week, we will be looking at the third control structure, the if statement, which is known as the decision structure. And before we look at that into depth, I want to look at relational and comparison operators and logical operators. Relational and comparison are synonyms, but you will generally hear me and the textbook's going to call them relational operators. Elsewhere, you might hear them called comparison operators. So what a relational operator is going to do is compare two values and return either true or false, depending on what operator is used. This is also known as a condition in our if statement or a condition in our loops. It is the test that will determine, are we going to loop again or are we going to exit the loop? Or it's the test or the condition that is used to decide which way you will be branching in your if structure. Here are our six relational operations. Notice that these symbols are not on the keyboard like we used in algebra, such as the not equal to sign being the equal to sign with a slash through it. And so for not equal to, we just do the exclamation mark equal to. Notice that when we're comparing equals, we don't use one equal to sign, we use two. There's the less than, the greater than, less than and equal to, and greater than or equal to. So these are the operators you will type in. Let's take a look at these examples. What's going to happen is, here's the operator testing for equality. The left-hand side will execute, so 1 plus 1 is 2. Does 2 equal 2? True. Is 3.2 not equal to 2.5? True. 10 less than 5, that's false. 10 greater than 5, true. 126 less than or equal to 100, false. 5.0 less than or equal to 5.0, that's true. When these relational operations are set as condition in an if, depending on if it's true or false, it's going to do one thing or the other. Let's talk about why we're using two equal to signs in Java for equality. As you know, the equal to sign is used as the assignment operator. What you should be thinking when you see this statement here is average is assigned the value of sum divided by 3. There does not have to be anything in average in order to do this. There does have to be something in sum. So when you're doing an assignment, always start on the right hand side calculate the value, and then assign it to the variable on the left-hand side. By the way, that's the only thing you can have on the left-hand side of an assignment statement is a variable. Do not think average equals sum divided by 3. Again, think average is assigned the value of sum divided by 3. Let's compare these two almost similar expressions, except for the fact that we're using the assignment operator here and the equality operator here. In this first expression, it doesn't matter what is in age, but age will be assigned the value of 21 after this expression is done. So in RAM, age will contain 21. In this expression, age has to have a value in it. It has to be some kind of numeric value in order to do this comparison. And suppose it has my age, which is, I'm not going to say, but over 21, this would end up being a false expression because my age equal to 21 is false. The result is false. Then depending on where that expression is at, something is going to happen. Maybe we will loop. Maybe we will branch in an if statement, or maybe we will assign that to a Boolean variable. One thing about using these comparison operators is that you're going to be using them on primitive types. Here is a list of the primitive types. We covered it in Chapter 2. Boolean, care, byte, short. And short is also an integer but it has a very low range between negative 32,000 and 32,000. Int is an integer with a much larger range. And a long is another integer with an even larger range. We have float, which is more in line with precision. 
than range, and we have double, which has a very high precision compared to a float. So we can use those operators on these data types. Now a string, as we talked about last week, is not a primitive. It's actually a class in Java. And I mentioned that weird things can happen if you try to use these operators on strings. Last week I mentioned that you should use the dot equals method. But what if you want to see if one string is greater than another string? Let's consider that. We're at the W3 Schools website, and we're looking at the equals method for a string. In this example, three string variables are declared. Two contain the same string value. Another contains a different string value. Notice the syntax for the equals method. So if you recall, methods are executed using the dot operator, and that method must be then attached to an object. This is considered an object. Here is object, dot, and then our method, which is equals. Now what's the argument? The argument will be the other string variable. This will return true because hello equals hello. And all it's doing is it's comparing ASCII to ASCII or Unicode to Unicode. In this example, we got my string again, the object dot equals, but we're comparing it to another string, which is false. However, in order to test for greater than or less than, which is really how you alphabetize in a program, of course a program can put things in alphabetical order. And to do that, strings in alphabetical order, you're going to use the compare to method. In this first example, two string objects with the same value, like the equals to method, we're going to use one of the string objects names, dot, and then the method name is now compare to. And the argument is the second string. Notice that instead of returning true or false, first of all, compare to is going to return an integer. In this case, if the two values compare to be the same lexicographically using ASCII or Unicode, then they're going to return a zero. If it returns a zero, we know those two strings are equal to each other. If the value returned is less than zero, then the object calling the compare to method is considered to be less than lexicographically or in alphabetical order than the other string. By the way, these will be case sensitive comparisons. And if the result returned is zero, then that value is greater than. So a capital R is greater than a capital B. That's how this value works. So if I was going to say capital R dot compare to capital B as the argument, it would return a value greater than zero. We will be putting those in if statements, and then you could alphabetize your items. Do take a note, there is also a compare to ignore case if you want to do a case not sensitive comparison.